22-year-old sometime hairdresser has been charged with murder and other crimes in connection with the killing of two women at family planning clinics in Brookline, Massachusetts last Friday. Two women he didn't know and had never met. Tonight, we'll show you exactly how police say he did it and what it was like in that moment of crisis when murder walked through the front door. <laughs> There have been demonstrations over abortion rights at Boston area clinics for years. Free state murder on demand. But no real violence. Until last Friday. Then I heard what sounded to me like a cap gun. Uh, pow, 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 pow. The thing that entered my mind was I've got to save those girls. I've got to make them stop. I found our receptionist on the floor dead, and that broke my heart. It happened in the Boston suburb of Brookline. Police Chief Howard Brackett. At about 10.04, all of a sudden, an emergency call came in on the 9-11 that they, we had a shooting at 1031 Beacon Street. Moments before, a young man dressed in black and carrying a duffel bag had walked up these steps and into the Planned Parenthood Clinic at 1031 Beacon Street. A woman who wants only her first name, Peggy, to be used was inside a counseling room across a hallway from the main reception area when she heard those shots. Uh, pow, 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 pow. I heard four. And um, we knew immediately because the shrills, you know, that came from the office. And we were scared. We stopped breathing. Shannon Lowney, 25, who was in the reception room behind a glass partition, was hit. So was a staff worker who was walking down the hall behind her. The gunman turned and shot two people sitting in the waiting room. Pandemonium broke out. I thought, oh my God, he's coming down the hall. He's coming down the hall. We got to get out of this room. He's going to shoot right through that wall. And you just don't know. And people were running. All the doing of a lone intruder and a 22 caliber semi-automatic rifle with a collapsible stock. It's the kind of uh, rifle you could put in a duffel bag, sort of a socket type bag. He brought a black bag into the uh, clinic. Well, many people, I think, believe a 22 is not a particularly deadly weapon. Well, it's a very lethal weapon. Uh, it's a slow, slow penetration through. It, it uh, breaks up, can break up a person pretty bad, 22. Three of those shots survived. But for Shannon Lowney, the receptionist, her life was over. The physician who was on duty here uh, ran immediately uh, to Shannon and uh, tried to uh, administer uh, uh, emergency procedures. And uh, Nikki Gamble is president of the Planned Parenthood League of Massachusetts. He was simply too late. The wound was too devastating. She died instantly. That's right. She was loved by everyone in this clinic. She was gracious and helpful to everyone who came in here. She was just splendid. Probably no more than a minute passed between the time the gunman walked in until he walked out, leaving behind such awful carnage. But it was not over. Just up Beacon Street, about a mile and a half away, is the preterm clinic. And he hit that one next. I heard the shots. An employee of preterm, who is afraid to be identified, was in a nearby office. And I thought, quite frankly, that they were electrical explosions. They were pop, 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 pop. The gunman had walked in the door to the reception area and confronted Leanne Nichols, 38, who was seated at a desk. He said, is this preterm? She must have said yes. My understanding, and it's only secondhand, is that he, s he pulled out a rifle and allegedly said, this will serve you right, and began firing at her. Leanne Nichols is hit. Another employee standing by a nearby copying machine is hit and falls to the floor. The gunman walks over, apparently intent on finishing her off. Then fate intervenes. I think I surprised him because he wheeled around and looked at me. Richard Cerrone, a security guard at the clinic, was in the stock room when he heard the shots. He drew his pistol, came through the door, and confronted the intruder. He raised his muzzle towards me, and I raised my uh, pistol to about shoulder height and let go one blast, and he began spraying my position. Cerrone was hit in the shoulder, the arm, and the hand, but kept firing. With this fellow who looked like the devil himself, blazing eyes and a horrific, uh, scowling expression on his face, 
cursed me, saying, in the name of the Mother of God. What did that mean to you? That he thought he was doing a righteous deed, a majestic act, but his face looked rather insane to me. The gunman fled, still firing his weapon, and disappeared. Back inside the preterm clinic, the woman shot by the copying machine was alive. But for Leanne Nichols, it was too late. I saw the most pitiful sight that I've ever seen. Uh, her uh, body just dumped on the ground, so to speak, face down in a huge pool of blood. It was a very sad thing. She was a wonderful woman. She had a wonderful, open, sweet personality. She was very kind. The accused gunman, John Salvi III, is in jail in Norfolk, Virginia, where he was captured last Saturday. Tomorrow morning, prosecutors will seek his extradition to Massachusetts, where federal authorities are considering trying him under a law that would allow them to seek the death penalty. This wildfire in Washington state is still causing big problems tonight, and investigators now know what caused this fatal fire in Winston-Salem. I'm Neil McNeil. Those stories plus a wrap-up of the GOP's big day in Washington, next on 11 at 11.